It's a pleasure to be here. Um, we will discuss uh, how we deal with the, the uh, challenges of, of uh, promoting uh, innovations and entrepreneurships in order to fight poverty. But I will start to give uh, with uh, giving a short background. SIDA, uh, a governmental agency, our mission is to, to contribute to conditions that makes it uh, possible for poor people to lift themselves out of poverty. And we must realize that uh, development aid has been very successful in many respects, but there are shortcomings and the aid landscape is uh, rapidly shifting and we have to look into new ways, new approaches to work with new kinds of actors in order to fight poverty and to promote democracy and human rights. And that's why we uh, decided a couple of years ago on a new, a brand new program called Business for Development. It's about to engage with the, with the private sector. Uh, we have been, I must say, within the development community, a bit reluctant, to say the least, to, to, to engage with business. Uh, but we must realize that business can, can serve as a very important uh, for, uh, actor in development because with business comes uh, huge resources, capital, uh, it, uh, knowledge networks, uh, result orientation and innovative capacity. So uh, within the, this program there are several different elements. It's about uh, uh, private-public partnerships, innovative financing, for example, we are working together with JP Morgan and, and Bill and, Mel and Melinda Gates Foundation to raise capital uh, in order to, to, uh, to, to invest in uh, uh, the development of drugs uh, fighting neglected diseases. And there are also some very important parts of that program that is aimed to, to, to support uh, social entrepreneurships, and we, uh, that's why we are supporting Social Entrepreneurships Forum, which is represent represented here by Emma. And there is another element called Innovations Against Poverty. And you can find information on Innovations Against Poverty outside at uh, the CEDA stand. And uh, it's, uh, it has been really challenging to work with Innovations Against Poverty. We have been uh, looking into that uh, concept for a couple of years and uh, last year we, we, we uh, procured uh, Price uh, Waterhouse Coopers to handle this program. And I'm so glad that Jan uh, Sturzon is here today and he will now explain to you how this program is working and what result we, we, we do uh, expect from that. Thank you, Johan. Uh, it's a great honor to be here, and it's, it's a very interesting process to work with CEDA in this EIP process. Uh, as you understand, it's a challenge fund, and we have got the, the uh, task to, to drive and, and manage and control that. Uh, and, and the criteria, as was said, it kind of, you know, it should be inclusive but profitable, innovative, uh, not have any kind of bad effects on the environment, and, and also it needs to be, without the CEDA money, no project. So it's really an add-on criteria, which is kind of very important, I would say. Uh, at, at the same time, it's about cost sharing. You need to show that you are really uh, a believer of what you work with. You walk, you talk, you put 50% right on front, and then see that goes with 50%, maximum 200,000 euro. So what we have been trying to do is to, to energize the different communities around there in business, saying, well, this is what we think, how can we apply innovation into these different uh, territories in Africa, Asia, wherever it is, let's say Africa right now, and to have them to apply, to ask for, for money, come up with great ideas, and, and then we have to go through them and see what kind of uh, ideas do they have, is it sustainable, uh, do they have uh, expertise, knowledge, do they have money, uh, can they make it happen, and a lot of things. So I would say we have been astonished, I think together with Sida, about how big the interest has been for going into this. So a lot more applications came in when we thought. So oh, how many applications at all? I don't have the exact numbers, but it's a couple of I have uh, almost 400. 400. I was saying 290, but it's 400. You know, and maybe it was good if we have 100, 250, but now we have 400. So it, it's an amazing job to, to check and balance all this. And of course, then you have a challenge as well, because how do you get both from Europe and from Africa to apply and to collaborate and to, I would say, create a collaboratory 
in between Asia, uh, sorry, Africa and, and, and Europe, and get the real deep knowledge and passion and love for the country you should try to serve. And I think here we are right now, trying to find out next steps, and there's a good process in place, uh, and uh, so far so good, I would say, but uh, there's a lot of challenges to be discussed even here tonight, uh, not tonight, today. So I would, I would, with that, uh, let me say, we also truly see the need of knowledge. Need for new knowledge, need for, uh, I would say, new energy even, to, to lead processes. Uh, and to maybe, how can we accelerate these guys? I think that's a question for you. Oh, I got two microphones. Yes, wow. Yes, <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, before I answer that, I will just, I, I realize that many of you sitting here in the audience have been sitting here for one and a half hour. Um, you are not that comfy chairs that we have in front here, and we have also water. So I would just uh, let us take 10 seconds for all of you to just rise up and say hi to your neighbor. Innovation. Let's do it. <laughs> say hi to your neighbor. Hi. Hi, hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Okay, that was up with a mingle tingle. Enough is enough. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> so, thank you for that, and hope to see some energy in your eyes back again. This is an important topic, and you need to be aware. Um, I am so happy and so honored and, and proud to have got the trust from CEDA uh, to design and uh, put in place a program with the idea of, of foster social entrepreneurship as a concrete tool of combat poverty and to reach the Millennium Development Goals. So what we did was that we took that trust from CEDA and created a program called Outreach. And Outreach is an eight-week, super intense, boot camp-like experience. It's an ex accelerator program for two months. We have chosen six startups, six startups that we have seen as a high potential leverage, high potential of really being part of a solution and with different approaches and different techniques and innovations, be a part of the solution of the global poverty uh, issues and also the environmental challenges that we see in the world. So we brought in six startups that are really interested, interesting that that have different approaches and how to reach that. And together for eight weeks, we are now working forward um, to find different methods and, and modules in the knowledge base that you need as an early stage startup in the seed stage. So what we did was that we met a lot of startups uh, and interviewing them, asking what would you need to have to, to grow and to, and to have the possibility to go from a good idea to an actual business. And we got loads of answers of needs. Some of the needs was money, but loads of them were not money. It was support, it was help, it was mentoring, coaching, and a lot of just expertise needing to build, a, build a, a company and a business. Then we interviewed experienced senior uh, entrepreneurs, asking them, when you were a startup, what would you have needed? What would you have asked for? And then we got a whole new range of answers. And from that on, we built a program, we designed an eight-week program uh, with the single purpose to strengthen, to foster, and to try to push the selected entrepreneurs from a kick-ass idea, a good innovation, to an actually a business. Uh, so that's where we are right now. Okay, and I know that there are uh, some entrepreneurs in this room right now. Mm -mm. Uh, and shall we start with, with the, the entrepreneurs we, within the... Uh, uh, your accelerator? Absolutely. Uh, I'm trying to find them with my eyes now, but I'm sort of blended yeah, out. Can you They're just very stand fast, up, stand uh, fast up. waving. So all of you stand up, and all of you other uh, people turn around and have a look. Uh, so in the very... Uh, yeah, Han, give them a warm applause. <laughs> They're really carefully selected. Uh, in the very top, we have Bertrand from the um, uh, startup called I Love Spam, uh, a creative uh, idea in how to turn the turn the negative work in workforce with the spam and fraud into positive high engineer and IT uh, skilled people in the developing south. Then we have uh, uh, 
then we have Martha working with the trio. She's out there as well. It's a triangular bottle uh, where you can actually both reduce waste but also build and create uh, shelter because there are many people in, uh, in many parts of the world lacking shelter, of course. We know that. Uh, then we have Joanne from uh, PowerFi uh, having an, a startup uh, about solar energy and how to, how to charge your mobile phone, especially in Kenya. Uh, and then we have Maya and Petter uh, running an IT, uh, uh, an idea of an IT plug-in in how to connect social entrepreneurs with uh, potential partners, funders, and other uh, potential partners. Very interesting. And then we have uh, Victoria from Uwaza, uh, a startup that will work with um, the mobile phone and how to how to transfer goods and money uh, in in Africa between people through the mobile uh, phone. Very, very exciting. And we have Patrick from Dumpties, working in a dump in Nicaragua, creating t-shirts with stories from people living at the dump far, far away from here. These are really, really cool people. Give them a warm hand again. And please talk to them, because these are interesting startups. And they're also very, very exhausted, because they're in this program right now. And we, they are working literally their ass off right now <laughs> uh, to improve their business. So, so be kind to them and give them a knock on their shoulder. They can need that. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah there are also some entrepreneurs uh, uh, within the uh, Innovations Against uh, Poverty pro program, and uh, one of them is Johan with uh, Beckman with uh, say, yeah, Sunny People. Uh, which you just uh, saw, and uh, Victoria uh, from Rubicup. Veronica, sorry, there is Veronica, so you might have heard her yesterday. And uh, we also have uh, uh, Per and Matthias from uh, Emerging Cooking Solutions, dealing with the cock stoves and, and in, in new smart ways in Zambia. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, Jan, perhaps you would like to, to give some more examples of uh, projects that are funded by Innovations Against Poverty? Sure, I think first congratulations to these guys who are just standing up. And we have others like uh, Sweet Stream, it's about uh, uh, in the healthcare systems, about uh, checking, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the name? Uh, Ultra. Ultra. Uh, sweat Stream. Uh, sweat Stream yeah. uh, for, uh, in, in medical care. And we have also a, a company called uh, Sanity in Kenya, it's about sustainable uh, sanitation in the slum. Uh, and again, it's about having the balance. How do we find the, the companies out there? Uh, and, and we have uh, also another uh, high nation. It's solar ICT, charging mobile phones, trying to get electricity into a, a neighborhood, which is uh, a game-changing thing. I never forget when I got one of the first pictures from one project, uh, having solar energy, charging batteries, and so charging solar phones, uh, sorry, so, uh, cell phones and for the first time able to check what's the price of the crops in the city. Doing, bus doing global business. What did they do? They took one of the big heroes in the village, gave him a sword, and he was the guard for the solar panel. 24 hours a day. Because this shows how important it is. It's a breakthrough, it's a leapfrogging thing to have one tiny solar panel charging everything, going into business going into the next stage of development. So there are many good examples coming from UK, Denmark, Sweden, and a lot of those countries, of course, in Africa. And the, and the challenge is really, how do we balance that process between those who have maybe more money to invest in the right companies, but also have strategies about how can you scale it up? And, and I would say it's a, about a global play. Global companies or local companies, a local going global. And we also in PwC has another kind of an accelerator that's not for knowledge, basically, it's about venture capital. So we take big companies, small companies, venture capitalists, donors, uh, starting startup uh, people coming from the, I would say, the uh, incubator system. The risk today is companies stays lifelong in an incubator. How do we make an accelerator or an incustrator? Something new, at least. So we take them out there and make a global play and help these smaller companies to, ex to, to, to success. One, one interesting part uh, in, in building and designing this program is that, as we know, the, there is no universal solution. There's not one single method in how to become a successful entrepreneur. 
Um, it, the world tend not to be black or white. It's damn gray sometimes. Um, and uh, so, so what we can see is there. Are, I would I would argue there are two different streams of of people coming in in our program and in in the field of social entrepreneurship overall. We can see the NGO sector uh, coming in wanted to make their wanted to make a business out of their idea. They know the, the, the local context, they know the, the understanding of, of an, what impact they might, may have and what they can do, but they need support with their business plan and they're finding a business model that is, that is relevant and, and also a long-term long uh, economic structure. On the other hand, we have the, the business sector, the traditional uh, business people, knowing their business plan by hand, by heart, uh, but, but want, ha have a change in mind, want to not to do less bad, but maybe also do good. Um, I want to become social entrepreneurs, and 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 they need another kind of support uh, in how to how to measure the social impact and how to understand the local market. Uh, and there we there we are trying to design program where we can we can fit solutions both in helping and building a strengthen business model canvas or uh, working on your uh, financial financial strategy. But on the other other hand, also dig into the Millennium Development Goals, dig in uh, to poverty reduction and what we actually need to change. And I think there is. Uh, there we have a win-win situation for for two for two different groups. But the third win we got that when we start to talk about impact and measure impact, and and I think there's a lot of discussion right now uh, here and and and, and in, in general about the term social entrepreneurs. How do we define that? Who are entrepreneurs? Who are social entrepreneurs? And, mm, and what is it? What is the framework? How can we how can we use profit? Can we have profit at all? And I think what we need to do as as well. It, is to step back and really look at the question about impact. How do we measure impact? How do we know that we are actually have a leverage on the people that we are support, supposed to have a leverage on? Uh, what we're doing in this program, we got funding from CEDA partly, uh, which mean, meaning that we have Swedish tax money that we're rolling a program. We need to be very careful that we, that we have a leverage on, on the entrepreneurs and their impact that they have in the developing South. We need to be very, very clear about that. So let's talk more about impact and how to measure impact and, and how we can improve that all the time, uh, along with the social return of investment, of course, but the impact. Yes, you're perfectly right. Uh, our politicians are asking us for showing results. And uh, uh, whatever we do with it, uh, should, uh, it, it must be result-based, you know. So uh, that's why it's very interesting uh, to work together with the business sector, because the business sector is um, much more result-oriented, I must say, than the public sector in general. But we know that there are a lot of good ideas, good uh, entrepreneurs, innovators out there. And, and of course, the, our innovations against poverty funding makes it possible to, for them to overcome the first uh, valleys of death. But we, we, we aren't, uh, that, that is, isn't enough. We want uh, the best of them uh, to, to be able to go to scale. And that's why it's important for us to, to engage with other c kinds of uh, financiers, for example, philanthropists uh, and uh, social uh, uh, impact investors. And uh, we have a very interesting instrument called uh, the CEDA guarantees, state guarantees, uh, which makes uh, it uh, possible for us to share risk with the uh, investors. And uh, we are looking into new ways of, of dealing with, with uh, the, this pretty, uh, pretty new instrument. And I have a colleague of mine standing in the very back. His name is also Johan. He's uh, waving his hand. And he, he is specialized in guarantees. So if you have some bright idea how to, and, and want to, to, as an investor, want to share, share risk with, with the, with the with this, uh, Kingdom of Sweden, rated AAA, you know, uh, uh, he, you should uh, surely speak to Johan. Okay, time is running. Uh, there might be some, uh, some uh, comments and questions from, from uh, the audience. Uh, shall we let them in? Please, please wave your hands. Thank you. My name is Anna Balkfors. I work here in Malmo with a Commission for Socially Sustainable Malmo. Uh, I really like your comment on uh, thinking global and act local. So uh, one one just thought uh, is uh, whether whether if it's possible 
to sort of transform your model into a local Swedish com context. Here in Malmo, we have one city districts where you have 60% of the children um, grow up below poverty line. And 80% of those have parents that are immigrants. Uh, so we have like major, major challenges uh, locally. And we, we spoke a lot about Africa, both in this panel and in the one before. Is it possible for us as social entrepreneurs to, to, to find um, uh, inspiration to actually act on a very, very local level? I think this is a very insightful question. And uh, yes, I think it must be. However, it's kind of tricky. We might find some really good investors from Africa to come and do it here in Sweden. <laughs> I mean, there is a, 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 a strong reluctancy from Swedish and uh, Scandinavian investors to work on their own backyard. And I think there is true to say that we need to do some uh, cleaning up work, do the homework, and find a, a, a kind of innovative solutions here so we can show this is actually can work here as well. I, I'm, I'm quite convinced on, on a personal level. We've been discussing this in PwC, uh, actually in, in, the, in the local context here of Malmö as well, some years ago, and doing some pieces, uh, bits and pieces of work in, in some of the schools when you say there's big problems. So um, let, let's, uh, let's try to uh, mentally paint this as a vision because I think we need to have it as a vision and a passion to make something locally. And I, I'd be happy to be a part of that process and, and to invest my thoughts into it. And uh, what do you think about this, Johan? I will turn over to you, to you Emma, because you are much more innovative than, than, than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the program that, program that we design uh, with different modules uh, in, in, in different aspects of becoming an, an entrepreneur, that is very much trans that as a model and as a tool for growing entrepreneurship, it could be put pretty much everywhere. Uh, and I'm really happy to share that, uh, both for entrepreneurs focusing on, on the global and emerging markets and poverty alleviation, alleviation. but uh, in, in the future, I would be happy to see that this program can also uh, involve to uh, adopt in, in the situation like in Malmö or in other places. It's a model and it's a tool in how to make entrepreneurs grow and strengthen their work. Let me say, last, uh, last week I met some guys in Gothenburg the two boys, 25 year old, having started starting a company, working in one of the worst, worst, worst areas in Gothenburg, trying to help these people coming to Sweden now to, to have a, a, I would say, a, a professional hiring of competence for this parent to settle out of employment. And, and go, they go with them to Swedish companies and try to, so they can get hired, so they can get their first work. But it's a social based entrepreneurship company idea. And I think that, that is a, a unique thing, because what they thought was, if we go and meet the CEO and understand that this is a problem, and then they see this competence base we have from the 14 or 30 nationalities, they can help them. What, what you're talking about is, is a very important issue to try to involve the business life, life also here back in Sweden. But I think there is a, a rather simple solution that we should keep in mind. We should try to keep it simple because there are different timetables for the business life and the, the, the public sector. And you have an, an um, have a span, where, a span where they can really be interested in your minutes, that is perhaps one and a half, two minutes, because they don't have more time. They are living in a world where every month is a struggle. They don't really have a budget for the next year, because they, are not know, they, they don't know what the next quarter will be. So you have to keep it simple. But if you reach them, and we have done that in, in Malmö with this Uppstart Malmö, where William Skåne was, um, was a part in the beginning, and we also have another project now going on called Esther, which will focus on, on, on um, uh, women with uh, immigrant background to try and that we would are really trying to bring in the business life but bring in them concrete because that's what they are looking for if you have it really concrete then you can get their attention and then it, then it will work don't make it too complicated reach them you are perfectly right we know uh, any more uh, comments Thank you very much. 
Mauricio Pavlatsa from Oxford University. I want to follow one of the points that you raised during your discussion. It was about the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goal, and how do we measure, how we understand solving poverty, uh, mitigating poverty, not only in, in the classical terms, but also including other areas, as we can see in the MDGs. Probably that is our new challenge, and designing the future is not only imagine what are we doing now, but also which are our new perspective. For that reason, my question is, how do you measure that other areas different from income, different from the normal business strategies that we have done? And if you have seen how that can be projected, not only in the MDGs now, but also in the new discussion about the new development goals from uh, 2015, that they will come, I think, starting next year. To us, it is very important that when when collaborating with business, we 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 are aiming to to sustainability in all three dimensions: economically, environmentally, and socially. And and uh, for example, when 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 dealing with the innovations against poverty program, each ap applicant have to show how uh, he or she will manage uh, those three dimensions. Uh, both in in the the uh, the baseline, which uh, should be levied at the, the start of the project, and also when monitoring and evaluating the program later on. So we are keen on on uh, those dimensions uh, to, to keep uh, those dimensions in mind every time. I think we also need to be um, very humble that this is the or one of the hardest challenges that you as an entrepreneur face to, to really measure uh, the impact that you may have. Luckily, there are many tools out there. Luckily, there are many, many uh, organizations and companies working to find methods, tools, and how to measure and how to, to really make, make sure that we're finding metrics uh, in these different areas re relates to the Millennium Development Code so we can measure that. But to be frank, I would say that we, we don't have loads of good examples here, uh, having a successful way of showing that there, the impact is really a, a, a real impact. Uh, I think that's a journey that I've just started and I'm looking forward to follow that in the future and we, and we need to take that uh, seriously and I'm looking forward to follow that. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Dion. Thank you, all of you uh, attending here. Uh, now we have to finish this session and uh, we will stay outside and uh, please come to us and, and uh, and uh, give us some uh, good thoughts and uh, and uh, ideas for 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 the next step of uh, our as we say very important work thank you very much <laughs> <laughs>